Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and today we're going to be talking about my best books of 2022. Let's get going. So I feel like I've read a pretty decent amount of 2022. I definitely see way more of 4 stars than 2021, so that's a good start. I do see like a few 5 stars read here and there. I'm still picky as to which books has 5 stars because you know, the book has to wow me for in order to give them a 5 star, or even a 4 star actually. But um, I'm happy to say that there are some books in, that are in those ranges. And one of them is The Final Gather by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. The third and final book of the Hawthorne Legacy. And it just basically picks up where the Hawthorne Legacy, um, the Hit and Heroes Games trilogy. You know what I mean. But like, this is basically where it picks up from the second book, the, Ho the Hawthorne Legacy, and it just kind of throws you right back into the mystery of it. And we have like these Evelyn and the Hawthorne boys who are racing against time to solve it, with because there's this new player that comes along, and like the stakes are higher than ever. So this book also has romance as well, which I didn't really mind, but I feel like I feel like the character development was good, so I feel like Avery has been a little mature than the previous two books. I think it was you know, Jackson on something like that. I think Jackson had like a really bad character development, so it was kind of raging. I'm like, Jennifer, why do you do to Jackson? He actually ended up being one of my favorite uh, of the boys, so like, I really didn't like how Jennifer did his arc. I thought she had done him dirty and he deserved far more better than what was in the book. Uh, I still like the mystery, I think the mystery is really really nice. And I thought like this book suddenly had like more complex to the story. There's like we have some secrets and dramas and all that fun stuff. So I actually thought this book was told like in riddles almost. So it then got you thinking as to what was it, what they were trying to say. But um, one thing I didn't really like was the relationship between Libby's and Abby. I thought it kind of drifted apart compared to the last two books. I still wish they had like a strong relationship throughout the books, but it kind of fell apart in the last one. And the love triangle, I hate love triangles no matter what book I read. It's like, come on. Uh, but like, also for Max's dialogue, I feel like he has like the most cringiest dialogue ever, so that kind of me off. I still feel like this book had the answers as to what was, like, as to like why it was Avery who has been chosen for this whole mystery. I still feel like it had been answered, so I thought that was nicely done. And so I thought this book had been nicely mapped up, so and th I did enjoy it, but yeah, which is funny because I didn't think I would actually pick this book again, just because of it, I didn't really enjoy the sequel, so like, eh, why, why, like, might as well finish it, what have I got to lose, so, yeah. Next one was Kingdom of Defeat by Kane Miniscalco, and this is the final finale of the trilogy. And we're just following as to what happened from the previous book, because that's where I actually left off. So I actually really like this, um, I thought it was a great finish to the trilogy, although I wish the plot was more consistent, and um, as the book started off strong, and I wish like there wasn't too much smut in Nas, I think that's what the book majority was about. It really had too much smut, so like, where's the plot? But I really like the lore of the story, I thought it was really nice. Then I wish we could have more about like Star Witches, and like the princess themselves. I still really like that. He is one of my favorites. I, I just think writing about princes, about their will be like a fascinating story. So I love the twist with the end of the, about the villain. I don't want to spoil too much in case you guys didn't read it. So I thought the twist was like really nice done. So that's actually one of my favorite parts. And like the sisterly moment between Victoria and Emilia. I thought that was a nice one. 
Um, I did love the descriptions. I thought they were amazing. So, I don't have too much things to say about this book. Um, uh, since like the majority of the book was about smarts. So I feel like thought, I don't really don't have that much to talk about. So, um, otherwise, I still enjoyed the book. I thought it was so great. But, um, yeah, so I just wish the smut wasn't the biggest point of the book. And my other one was My Country Mary by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Reynolds. And not Jody Benson, like how I had said last time. So this was actually for my December TV or something like that, so I didn't talk about these two books. But I still, I still want to talk about them because I loved them so much. So My Country Mary, I loved it. So we basically have Mary who is the Queen of Scotland but she has been living in, in France most of her life and she is destined to marry Francis. But Mary also has a secret and not even the court knows about it. She can shapeshift into a mouse and shapeshifters are illegal. But now Francis discovers that there's a plan against Mary with his with their uncles that want to go against Mary. But and then but then Francis has his own invention as well, so I still so um, yeah, so I still like both of the adventures. It was not like a fun read. I really liked the relationship between Francis and Mary. I thought they were cute. Like that one moment we actually care about. It's really really cute. Um, but it was a bit too long of for the book. I think at least a few pages or chapters should have been shredded off. Uh, I didn't like having got to see how wicked everyone can be if power is comes into play, so I thought they did a nice touch. And I like how the authors remote the history in the best way possible. So I thought that was also really great. And it was also nice that this book was also set in My Lady Jane, so we did got to see some familiar characters from My Lady Jane, so that was really nice. Um, yeah, I just really like how they rewrote the history in the best way possible, even though it's not accurate, but I still thought it was funny, considering that Queen, uh, Mary Queen of Scotland, she actually terrifies me. That's the one queen I actually don't like, <laughs> because she terrifies me a lot, but it was still nice to read about her, even if the history isn't accurate, but um, yeah, so also I really like numbers. Norma Stratus? Is that how you say your name? I can't see her name, but you know who, I hope you know who I'm talking about. I think she has a good arc as well. But, yeah. So, I also like the romance between her and that one friend I can't remember. I'm so sorry. But, yeah, I know I had so thought this was a really nice book. The next one was Moon by Ellen Goodluck and we're following three different girls. Who are called the capital of Colonia to find out that there are three legitimate, illegitimate daughters of King Andreas. Plus, they live their whole lives in night and as to who they really were, and this was living the life that would be considered lesser than the citizens of C Colonia and the other reaches. Now King Andreas is alive. He recently lost his hair and is in need of choosing a successor to the throne. The plan is to have the girls serve in court with their father and eventually King Andalus will select who he thinks can rule Colonia. I feel like this, I felt like the political behind Colonia was really interesting and intriguing. intriguing. The regions who were, who were named him. And I also really like the magical system as well. I thought it was a refreshing addition to this world that can set up some really interesting plot lines and which is like to call blood arts and to access them one must access them one must death so only these born in the reaches can tap into them so filling kind of gives them like an extra boost like speed strength armor and so on there's also a darker side to the arts called vulgar arts and then it's considered worse than any physical crime that there is, so I thought the magic system was really nicely done. Um, it did sort of remind me of Three Dark Crowns, which I have read, and I found it okay. But there are some parts that are not similar to Three Dark Crowns, 
and like just that world bag is just really sets up really differently in this book. So like the main similarity of both are obviously they are both YA fantasies and both have a good setup. As to where these three girls will be and only one of them will be queen. But otherwise everything else is really different so I do like that. Um, I did enjoy the three girls secrets. I thought that was nicely done. And like the black male of the mystery. So like very complicated relationships that I thought was done. I really loved the diversity. I thought that was really really nicely done. So I really love the diversity. Also there's like a really great amount of twists in the book which I really liked. And uh, that cliffhanger. Oh my gosh. That cliffhanger. Like wow. But um, yeah, so that's where I like that move. Next book, well this is actually a more of a manga, so that's me Kanena as a sword, volume 1, by Yu Tanaka. I'm a following a girl who has no name, and she has been a slave for 4 years, so she's trying to get out of it. Some of these guys and her are going to the city, they get attacked by the monsters of the forest. And during the fight, the girl suddenly finds a sword, but that sword can talk. Yeah, that sword can talk. So then the sword actually releases the girl, and they fight, and they fight the monsters. And now they are traveling to the city. So I really like this. I thought the main character was cute. Uh, she's really nice, so I really like how her character was played throughout the books. I didn't really find like the sword. I thought he was a little bit rambunctious. So maybe that will kind of die down throughout the book. But otherwise I still feel like the storyline of the manga was really nice. So I don't wanna, you know, continue reading it. This is only the first book. The first book the uh, first manga kinda of left in a cliffhanger, which I want to know what happens, obviously. Uh, the next yeah. one is Defend the Nine by Benjamin Camilla, and honestly, she follows the first story, which is The Fine and Night. And we see Tessa Aquatic embark on a dangerous journey to a source of collective moonflower from a neighboring kingdom after the emissary arrives from an intriguing author. But I actually really like this. I thought, that, I thought this was better than the first one, The Fine and Night. Um, so I thought the new characters were really developed and well, and they were like self-contained stories of it. Almost the whole line, I really liked how it was wrapped up, and I was curious as to how everything was progressed, so I was really happy how it was going, like how the characters' complexity and depth were shining throughout the book. I'm, um, I'm not sure if this book will fall as how the curse breaker did, I didn't really like the second book. No, it was the third book I didn't really like. So I'm just kind of worried that this trilogy will fall like how it was with the Curse Breaker trilogy. I'm hoping it wouldn't. Um, but like, I still feel like the world building was consistent and familiar. And it just like this plot feels like a spin off of the events from the first book instead of like a continuation. And I really liked the private adventure. I thought that was fun, so that was cool. I really liked the exploration between Colin and Hannister and I thought that was well done. Um, I did still enjoy Colin and Tessa's growing relationship in this one. Some, even though sometimes the drama can be unnecessary at times. But I still find like their tension was really real and realistic. So, you know, because they still need to know, know more about each other, so I really like how that was done. There was a new introduction of characters. Um, I feel like they weren't really necessary to the plot, but maybe that's just me. But like, they did reveal some things that needed to be known, so I guess there was a point to them. But I still feel like we really didn't change much of the old characters, which I really appreciate because that can go wrong in so many ways with the new characters. But yeah, and so considering with the ending of this book, I didn't really see a third book. But otherwise, I thought it was really great. It kind of, but like, I still think that it was a little bit rushed though. I 
I feel like the author could have taken more time to it. I don't know if I'm gonna read the third book. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know, but we will see. The next one is Our Cooked Hearts by Melissa Elbert, and it has I've been following Ivy, who gets into minor accident, but her face is a little banged up, and then and I mean grows more concerned as to, because there's a speaker who is causing them to go off the road in the first place and to try to figure out why and who is that. So I really like this book. I thought it was a unique and creepy. I do like creepy books so I thought this was really nicely done. So I do like Dana's chapters more than Ivy but Ivy wasn't really that bad either so I do like both of them I guess. So, so the rabbit um, they kind of creep me out. <laughs> so, I don't know. Like, the rabbit just creeped me out for some reason. It shouldn't be, but they did. So, I don't know what happened there. Like, this book definitely did has, like, a dark and ominous feel to it. It has two timelines. I think they were following Ivy and Ivy's mom as well. So, they were just following, like, the one person, one in the past kind of thing. So I was really like, so yeah, I really liked it. So I just really like, I really like the mystery, I like the plot of it, I do like the characters from here and there. But um, so overall this book, I really did enjoy the mystery especially. So my next book, I was really excited to read about this book, and I still am. I kind of want to do a reread about this book. And that's Babel from Art of Quam, Five Star Zeals. So I really enjoyed it. I actually touched it a, a little bit as well. This was from an October TV year from last year but I still want to talk about it because I just really love this book too much. I annotated the heck out of it so that was a really fun time. It was basically for Robert Swift in 1828 who lost his mother to sickness. So then there's this professor that comes from England to pick Robin up so that he can study to the Oxford University, like the most prestigious school, which the Royal Institute of Translation, also known as Babel, also known as Babel, and he and kind of learns like the magic of it, like, like the magic system, and but he also learns a, about the darker side to it, so I really love this. I thought the magic, magic system was so, so cool. I really mean, like how they have to find specific words to be matched properly so that it can actually do its thing. So I thought that was like a really, really nice touch. So it has definitely been a while when the, where I had a book that made me feel like overwhelmed, depressed, sad. So I thought that was like a really nice touch because it has been a while since the book made me feel that way. And that is Babel. <laughs> so, I like wow this book I just love this book so much. So love so Love Lows and Robin's relationship. Um <laughs> so their relationship was really a rocky one. And in all honesty, I don't think there was ever a disclosure between those two at all. Which is sad because I kinda wanted to have a disclosure, but considering what happened throughout the book me just never got an ending. So uh, maybe there was like action at one time when they were talking to each other in a meaningful way, but that's as far I feel like it will close. Uh, in ways, I do see Robin being the same as his father, even though he didn't want to be. Like, Robin is stubborn, dedicated, ambitious, and what's really interesting is that the spoilers is that Robin really did became the villain even though he did not want to be the villain so he sort of saw himself being the villain because he just wants to see the empire fall so they both want to be the villain of their own story Lovela wanted war while Robin wanted to see the empire fall to his knees by achieving it any way possible which made him be the villain he didn't want to be one so yeah, um, his uh, Robin arc story was really really nice. I thought I thought that was like, really well done. There were things how they got to explore his identity and belonging to the world whether he really did belong in England, 
which, you know, intimately didn't belong. But he was also, like, he will always be Chinese. He will always be to his motherland. And no matter how many people, like, love well tries to erase it, it was always, it will always be there. He will always be where he originally was. You just can't erase that part. So to his friends, I did not like Lenny at all. So, I don't know, I just don't like her. There's just something odd about her. Her and Manny couldn't get along, and I didn't exactly see the friendship with McTorney and Lenny, so I feel like they definitely were really well friends to begin with. Because Lenny will always have the upper hand, no matter what, because of Lenny and who she is and what she is. You know, again, spoilers, so Lenny did something unspeakable, and that was like, she betrayed her friends, which really broke my heart. You know, but because she went to the police, and someone was the daughter of the admiral, I knew she wouldn't be able to live long. In, like, she wouldn't be able to live long in Hermes, so I knew with someone having like a, who has like a powerful father, she did not want to be in her country, so... As for Robin, I didn't think we were told as to what his real name was. I kinda have a theory about it. It could be no Robin in Chinese. So... Maybe? I don't know. I think that means bird in Chinese when I search it up, so... For my Babel, so as you can see, I really love Babel and I really love how... Art of Quorum was able to tell the story throughout the book and kept me captivating and it just kept me wanting more. So I just really like how Art of Quorum really did her book. So my next one is I Am the Middle by Zilin J. Shell and the following voice of Dan, who is an 18 year old who has lived her whole life under the rule of the men. Her only value is money and her family. Her only value is the money her family can get if they sell her as a bride or, or the monetary compensation they will get if she enrolls in the army as a pilot's concubin and dies in battle. But, you know, obviously she's not really happy about that position, but if she has to survive, then she must do it that way. So, yeah, so I really like this. I really like the writing. There are a lot of metaphors which I like. I also like how Zeran um, showed how the women were mistreated, they were really mistreated unfairly. So I thought the way how Zilla and show that was really not well done. Also the pace was really constant throughout the book. It wasn't boring, it wasn't, you know, un inconsistent. It was just really had a really nice pace throughout the book. It had a lot of good politics, fighting, and other men's. But I also really liked the world building, so I thought that was also well done, but I do wish that it had more details about the history or the status of the rest of the world. So it was kind of unanswered questions, but it didn't really prevent me from understanding or enjoying of this book. I really liked Moon Zetan, who is the main character. She is strong, she is resilient, she is very determined and very feminist. So, you know, considering how her life is, what she did was really understanding. So I thought Zeta and Ben a really nice touch with her characters. And it just like how she actually made choices that actually made sense. Just because of how Zeta's, you know, situation was. And, you know, basically she doesn't really give a damn. So, yeah, you know, she doesn't really give a damn. Even about her family, considering how her family treated her like her, so I really like how Zed down and give a damn about how people, how people are viewing her. So yeah, I really like how she's hot-blooded and calculating and cold, so I really love that for her. So, um, yeah. I really like the action that Crystal's battle scenes was really nice and it kind of felt like I was in the battlefield as well. And the ending, I really like the ending, so, it took, so I'm really excited to read the sequel, I have a link to it And so, I'm just really excited for the book. So I'm sorry if I'm talking too fast, I'm just gonna 
having technical issues here. I don't know what's happening with either of my cameras. I'm recording from my phone and I'm recording from my original camera which has issues. So my phone camera has issues. So I don't know what's going on. But anyways, I hope you like this video. It was a struggle to film because of all the issues that I have been, I have been having. But anyway, so please like, comment, and subscribe so that you'll be notified every time I post. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye!